I'm Mike Wary, alias the Falcon. I was asked to report to FCC, the Federal Communications Commission. That's Uncle Sam's boss for radio and television, telegraph and the telephone. Specifically, I was on a telephone job. It seems a new racket had been uncovered. It involved bookmaking. A gambling syndicate had moved in on people who were down on their luck and rented their phones. For a few dollars, a man has moved in to sit by the phones and receive bets. So a legitimate subscriber is involved in an illegal racket. The first case that I stumbled on involved, of all people, a professional football player. You probably saw in the papers where he was badly hurt in a game a few weeks ago. His name was Kip Appleton. Give me a little smile, Kip, please. Just a little smile. Oh, hello, Miss Shaw. Hello, sweetie. How's our big fella today? About the same. Hmm. Another doctor on the case. Yes, a brain specialist, Dr. Schoenfield. Bad consultation now. It sure runs into money, sweetie. Well, I'll keep my fingers crossed. What did they say, Bob? Well, Betty, you take four officials at a game. They can't always agree where the ball went out of bounds. But Kip is going to get well. Just know that, that's all. So, maybe pro football is out. He can always be an announcer like me. That doesn't take any brains. Oh, please, Betty. Don't make people search for words. There's no reason. I'm sorry, Bob. Sure. He's going to get well. It may be a long haul. How are you fixed for money? Oh, <laughs> that's a fine question to ask a couple of kids just a year out of college. We'll get by. How long will Kip have to stay in the hospital? Well, the doctors can't say yet. Well, you come on over to Jersey and see us sometime. It's a small apartment, but I made the curtains myself. I'll make a lamb stew, too. Kip Appleton's condition critical. Pro football star injured in Sunday's game fails to show improvement. Marita? Yes, Frankie? Say, uh, you were telling me something about feeling sorry for that football player's wife. Yeah, poor kid. Well, now, if things are really that rough, I might be able to turn something good her way. My heart bleeds for people with money problems. Well, I'm people, Frankie. Yeah, well, we'll see how things turn out. Maybe you can pick up an extra hundred or two. Frankie said something about an extra hundred. Or two. Yeah, if the setup is right. Figure things out for yourself. Just a minute, please. <laughs> now, get the door. Shaw from the hospital? Certainly, Miss Shaw. Hi, this is my boyfriend, Cliff Prince. I was worried about you, so he drove me over. Cliff was a fan of your hubby. Hello, Mrs. Appleton. Sorry to see Kip looking like this. The doctors say he's making fine progress, Mr. Brand. It's just a matter of time. Oh, and what's all this? Something to occupy my time, Miss Shaw. Cliff has to run an errand. Mind if I visit for a while? 
Be glad to have you. Excuse me, Mrs. Appleton. <laughs> May I get you something? A match. I have a cigarette. Oh. I know things are rough, and I worry about you. How would you like to have your slate cleaned, rent and utilities paid, and $50 a week as long as you want? <laughs> Mr. Brent can fix it. He needs a place just like this for his phone calls. $50 a week. How does it sound? It's incredible. I can hardly believe it. Uh, what kind of a business is Mr. Brent in? Well, let's say he deals in figures. The price on a ball game, how much is being bet on a certain horse? He may even take a bet or two. I laid him off if he smells a boat ride. A gambler. Oh, I'm not asking you to run a bookie joint. <laughs> oh, Cliff has a lot of men working for him. He just needs a quiet place to get his calls. Come on in, Cliff, and talk to the lady. Ago, you couldn't even do that. Oh, no more, darling. I have to go now. Kip, please don't be mad when you find out how we've been getting by. I know it's wrong, but... For a while, at least, I have to believe it's right. When you're well again, we can be like we were before. phone just rang. Well, I'm right on time. Somebody must have a fast watch. Yes, I guess that's it. Five thirty, Mr. Brent? Anytime. I'm knocking off early. the action. Keep talking while I get organized. Fine. Take all bets. But call me on any figure over a grand on Plucky Gus and the third. It might be business I'm not in on. Yeah. Take this new address, Dan. 38 Canal, a warehouse. Meet me there any time after 8 for the payoff. Right. Beat it, you big ape. Stop staring at me. Yeah? Yeah, Tanker? Our figures don't jibe on last week's take. Now get this new address. 38 Canal, and make sure your figures are straight when you meet me.
wasn't very much. Give me a hand. Just a little accident. It was the doorbell. He thought it was Betty. Tried to turn too fast and fell over. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, it was my fault I was in the other room. By the way, I'm a friend of Betty's. She wanted me to watch out for Kip while she was gone. Guess I didn't do a very good job. Huh? My fault. If I hadn't rung the doorbell... Hello? Appleton apartment. What's that? No, uh, you've got the wrong number. The kip looks fine. A couple of hard knocks can't hurt him. Yeah, he's making real progress. Betty will be sorry she missed you. I'll tell you to stop by. Thanks. I'm Bob Clark. You got something good? No. I just do it to pass the time. Do you know Mike Waring? Mike Waring? No, no. Well, neither do I, but he's got an article in the paper. It's about fine police work that's driven the gamblers undercover. He wants the public to know how these characters feed off a guy who's down on his luck. I'll make a point to read up on it sometime. Yeah, it might be enlightening. How much do you want to bet I've got this character pig right? One more of the cards, that'll be enough. A man from the telephone company. Come in. Here's a phone that's really out of order. The murder weapon. Covered with Kip Appleton's fingerprints. Oh, the football player? You probably read about him getting hurt. What, do you think he's guilty? Cut and dried. If you can call a man guilty, whose mind isn't ticking right. You ever see him wearing? Big fella. Built like this. Yeah, he's quite a guy. I've seen him play. Any other prints? Mrs. Appleton's. Few o'clock, the guy was murdered. She'd gone out. Clark came here to visit. Appleton let him in. He could work the wheelchair and open the door. First time he'd been on his feet. Well, the doctor says it's entirely possible. Shock, sudden anger. It's like a guy forgetting he can't do something, so goes ahead and does it. What does Mrs. Appleton have to say? <laughs> Poor kid, I haven't tried for much yet. What a shock. Coming home, finding a friend dead, murder weapon in her husband's hands. We probably never know what Clark said or did to make that kid blow his top. Incidentally, where is she? At the hospital. She won't leave her husband. Because it's all her fault, she should have never left them. Uh, see you, Lieutenant. The murder weapon was a telephone. It turned out to be the first real lead I had found in a thousand. Mrs. Appleton talked willingly, eagerly, about the gambler who had been using her apartment. I didn't hold anything back from the police. I, I didn't mean to. All I could see was Bob Clark dead and my husband. Of course, Mrs. Appleton. But it wouldn't look like a connection with you. This man named Brent? Cliff Brent. We're gonna find him. Who steered you into this setup? A part-time nurse at the hospital here. Rita Shaw. Well, they ought to be able to find her. Mr. Waring, is there any hope for my husband? Well, the police believe him to be guilty with certain reservations about not having a clear mind. You've been playing in a pretty rough league, Mrs. Appleton. I suggest you remain close to the hospital until I can pick up Brent. Fine, thanks I get for helping out a friend. I don't know who you are, and I'm not straight on what you want. But please don't mix me up in things. Are you a cop? A 38, Smith & Wesson. Who is this Cliff Brent you introduced to Mrs. Appleton? Where can I find him? Big stuff. Picking on someone like me. Rita will lead Waring to you and then to me in the whole setup. Go ahead and see if she doesn't do it. Where do you figure in this setup? 
Do you just point out people like Betty Appleton, or do you have a babysitter, too? Or is there another Brent taking bets on your phone? Uh... Expecting someone? Maybe you and your fat gun just want to muscle in. Well, show me a badge that says you can take me downtown, and I'll talk. Now, you listen to me. There's a trigger man out in that fire escape. Objective silencing you. You stay out of range and talk. You don't know a man named Cliff Brent. You wouldn't say anything if you did. I want to grab him alive so he's able to talk. Now, you go into your little act, sweetie. I don't know anyone named Brent. And get this, copper. If I did, I wouldn't tell you. So you're just wasting your time. So beat it. shot, Mrs. Appleton. He'll drop off in a couple of minutes. Why don't you try to get some sleep? Thanks. A little later, maybe. Well, I have another patient. I'll drop back before leaving the hospital. Betty? Betty? Jim, you haven't said that for so long. It's another big step for us. Oh, what's happened, Betty? Try not to think. You'll be asleep in a moment. I keep hearing somebody talking. I don't know. Who is he? Where, where did he go? Please, please, Kip. I've got to think. Where can I find him? Tomorrow, Kip. Canal. Canal, Betty. Do we know anyone at 38 Canal? Cliff Brent. But I don't hold out much hope of getting a lead off that name. Hey, I'm bringing Mrs. Appleton down to go through the mug shots. Hey, what about the other man, the little guy, about five feet six, sharp features? Probably got cuts on his face. Yes, I've heard the police pick up calls, but I haven't heard the has-been picked up call I want to hear. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Back in that bed. I need the coat, Doc. Get back in that bed. Alert. Alert all cars in Central Area. Be on the lookout for Kip Appleton. Caucasian. 24. Height 6'3. Head bandage. 
wearing trench coat, this man is dangerous, has just escaped from General Hospital. Repeat, this man is dangerous. Repeat on alert to all cars in Central Area. Repeat on alert to all cars in Central Area. I had the most wonderful area. news. I think I know about... I'm going to look out for Kip Appleton, Caucasian, 24, height 63, head bandage, wearing trench coat. This man is dangerous has just escaped from General Hospital. Repeat, this man is But dangerous. he was asleep when I left him. He was fine. He talked to me. An address seemed to have something to do with Brent. What was the address? 38 Canal. I need every penny of the week's receipts. I need cash and I need it fast to get out of town. Frankie! Take a look down the street, see if any of the boys are coming. All right, Cliff. Funny the way your mind comes back after being hurt. First, you just get a bit, a few words perhaps, but then the whole picture fills in. I can see you right now knocking Bob Clark around the apartment. I wanted to help him out, but you clipped me. Then there was a roar in my head like trains going over a bridge, but I could still see you. Though I couldn't even move my little finger. You were very careful to wipe all your fingerprints off the phone. Then you came over to me and put it in my hand, and I couldn't stop you. I couldn't even take my fingers off the phone after you left it there. Let's try for the extra point. Uh, 